So you've got your anime girl fully modeled, but now you need to rig it, including all the weird stuff like the jiggly, dangly bits, stuff like hair, chains, etc. Well, look no further. In this video, I'll outline my quick and simple full rigging process that's jam-packed with all of that extra stuff. As always, the description will have all the timestamps and links you need in case you want to skip over some things that you don't need. So to begin, let's start with the hair. If you've used the curve method to create hair, which I have a video on, you might have some clipping with your hair, and usually that's not a problem. There are some cases where auto-weighting breaks because of the clipping, but regardless, some have asked how to make it neater. So I'm going to show you a quick way to take all those hair strands and combine them into one mesh so that there's no clipping. I select a vertice from each of these front bang strands and press Ctrl L to select all the relevant vertices and then right click and separate them. Not all hair needs to be rigged. There are static and moving parts and the bangs usually move so let's separate them into their separate object for now. There's also a lot of clipping going on which we can fix. I'm going to press F to complete these faces, hide that and then do the same for the rest. Alt left click and F to quickly fill in those ends. We're gonna do a very quick and lazy retopology by heading over to sculpt mode, remesh. Press remesh. Voxel size doesn't matter as long as it maintains its shape. Now that's a lot of vertices. We can fix this by adding a decimate modifier and turning down the ratio as low as we want. Look at that face count go all the way down. Let's apply that. And these bags are now a little more optimized because there are no more inside vertices, so we've actually saved a few vertices as well. And of course, this is just one way to do it. You can always manually retopology it with a snapping mode for a neater and more controlled finish, but this is definitely one of the fastest ways. We can even go to mesh tools, tries to quads, and guess what that does? It turns the tries into quads. In the grand scheme of things, this doesn't really matter, but it's there if you want to do it. Let's also grab another part of the hair to have movement, for example, these side hairs. These are also created by the curve method which I've showed in my hair video. And they do clip together but not, not really too horrible so we don't have to remesh the entire thing. We can just deal with these, drag them away from each other with mirroring on, alt left click their uh, end edge loops, and then just find the bridge edge loops so that we can join them together. It's a little more organized. Okay, let's move on to the armature stuff. I'll auto-rig the body first, then transfer that onto the clothing later. Over in object mode, I'm just going to shift A and add an armature, the human meta rig one. Scale that up and make sure it's rotated in the correct direction. Tab over to edit mode with the rig selected. I delete the face bones because I don't usually rig the face to bones. I use shape keys, which I discussed in my last video. So over there, I just extrude one bone from my head outside of the neck. Just making sure everything is centered. And this part is straightforward. We just try to get the rig matching up to the body as best as we can. Not gonna be really using those bones either, but everything else, let's just put into place. These breast bones, I'll push them forward a bit to match the shape of the breast more. Fingers may be the most tedious part. Just make sure that you always look at them from multiple angles so that you can ensure that those little bones are all in there where they're supposed to be. So just checking in on this from multiple angles from the top, align them, then from the side as well because they will be curved. I don't know if your hand models will be curved, mines are straight so I have to adjust those. And let's match up those three segments as best as we can. Let's also look at it diagonally to ensure that it's really in there. And once everything's aligned, we can go over to object mode, left click the body object, then control left click the rig object. And simply right click and bring up the parent menu with automatic weights. The body mesh will now be a child of the meta rig. And if you tab the rig over in pose mode, you've got your basic rigging. For the most part, auto rigging is not horrible, but it is a great idea to learn how to tweak the weight paint. So let's left click the rig, control plus left click the body, tab over to weight paint mode where you can control plus left click these bones to see what they have dominion over. Using the brush, let's just cover all of these toes with that end foot bone. And here over on the breasts, I like to tweak this because I don't want the breast covering all of that area, I just want the breast bones to cover just the breasts. So I change the brush to subtract, remove everything, and then change it back to add and fill in those breasts. You can change the brush to add or subtract 
on the brush drop down next to strength. Using mirroring always gets weird here for me, so I just manually do both. I'll just have to make sure that once everything is filled in, I refine it at the end, change it back to my subtract brush, and take out all of those edges. Mainly what's important is that they don't spill over to the other side. Secret sauce time, I change it to a 0.7 strength subtract brush and I just go over it like that. This will dampen the jiggle, which trust me, you will need unless you're making like H content. Next up on weight paint, I want to control click over to the neck bone. I want the neck to have no influence over what happens on the head. So full strength subtract brush, just go over the entire head. Otherwise, when your character's neck turns, it will deform the head which we don't want. And logically, when we control click over to the head bone, we want to make sure everything in the head is fully red. These external eye pieces usually don't get caught by the auto rig, so you definitely have to fill those in and make sure you go inside as well. Weight paint in that entire mouth box, including teeth, including tongue. This practice model doesn't have teeth and tongue. Back over to the neck bone, just make sure that it controls none of the interior head stuff as well. Now here I have my non-moving hair mesh parts. Compare them to the rig just like the body mesh. Automatic or not, doesn't matter. Just make sure it's fully red and attached to the head bone. Troubleshooting time. I select all the bones and move them around to see that there are some vertices that don't move around because they're not painted. This happened when we were adjusting the breast weight paint. I'll go over the suspected areas with a very low strength brush. And as long as a face's weight paint value is not zero, anything greater than zero, it will follow the bones. And so a quick test in pose mode once again will reveal everything's all good now. Now that the body is fully rigged, we can attach the clothes to the rig. Let's parent it to the rig with empty groups. Then to the clothes object, let's add a data transfer modifier. Move this above the armature modifier. I drop the body as the source. Open up vertex data drop down and click vertex groups. Also, this modifier is pretty much broken until you apply it. So go ahead and apply it and you just gave approximate weight painting to all of your clothes in relation to the body. As you can see, just like with the body, it's not perfect, especially for those complicated outfit pieces, which is why we learned to tweak things in uh, weight paint. So just head on back. You know how to navigate your way through the bones now. And it's just a matter of, does it make sense that this bone controls this area? And if not, go ahead and fix it. There are two hanging objects like this chain and uh, a strap on the back of the jacket, which I will remove from any weight painting because I will give those parts their own dedicated bones. Also remember, you can tab into edit mode and hide parts of the mesh with H. And that just makes life easier when you're trying to paint objects that are behind other objects. These thigh bones don't need to have control over this chain and the jacket parts, so let's remove those. Let's tab our rig over to edit mode. And I'm gonna start adding bones for these dangly clothing parts. So let's add a new bone position it to this chain. I extruded three times, gave a few segments. It's up to you how many segments you want your um, chains to be. Of course, the more bones, the more detail, as in the more places that it can deform. Now let's take the top bone of this chain and click the nearby thigh bone and parent it with parent, make, keep offset. Let's do the same process for this hanging strap at the back here. Create a bone and drag it over, scale it and extrude it a few times, parent it to a nearby bone, and these ones are easy to manually weight paint. And here, to be transparent, I should have used full strength instead of 0.3 strength to paint, but at least later you'll get to see what difference it makes when you fully paint it red and when you do go with a lower strength paint. Same thing with this chain hanging from the thigh. Moving on to rigging the hair. And here I've actually created a new armature from a single bone, as you can see here. Don't worry, we can easily combine armatures together after. Now, similar to the hanging clothing parts we did earlier, we'll just follow the shape of the hair. And the number of bone divisions, again, is up to you. For these hair strands that are gonna be mirrored, I'm gonna use something called Symmetrize. Just select all the bones to mirror, bring up the menu, symmetrize. Symmetrize only mirrors from the Y axis. So Y is for you. Y should be facing you. So rotate your mesh and armature accordingly. And if it still doesn't work, try applying the rotation. Once you're finished, you can parent these moving hair parts to the rig. 
click the hair object, control click the armature, parent with automatic weights, just like we did for the body. Over in weight pay mode, we can see that everything is sectioned off quite neatly. Let's select both the moving hair object and the hair rig. Press control A and then do apply all transforms. Now you can select both rig objects and just right click join to join them. Now both of your rigs will be Frankenstein together and all the meshes that are under those rigs will be now under that one rig but will remain as separate objects that you can join later. In weight paint we can see that everything has retained all of its rigging. Tab the rig over to edit mode and parent the top bones of these hair chains to the head bone. Similar to how we parented the chain bones to the body. Now moving on, let's rig a skirt. Let's add a new armature which we will Frankenstein to the whole thing again later. We'll start with a four link chain which we will duplicate and rotate around the skirt. Now we can duplicate the set of four bones and just rotate it around onto the side of the skirt as well as behind. Of course, we'll have to adjust it to fit the shape of the skirt. And similar to the side hair strands, we can select all the bones that need to be mirrored, right click, and then press symmetrize. Adjust the bones on the other side since it's asymmetrical. And since we've done this a couple of times already, hopefully you know the deal. Parent the skirt to the rig with automatic weights. You can also, with all the bones selected, go to weights and click smooth. There is an extra step you can take with the envelopes, but we're not going to go over that today. Auto rigging will do just fine. Apply all transforms for the skirt and the rig. Then you can join it to the hair the same way you did the hair rig. Just join both rigs together. And since all the meshes are rigged now, I can join all the meshes together too. And just like the hair, whenever you Frankenstein the rigs together, you have to make sure they're parented to the main rig. Over in the rigs edit mode, select all the top bones of the skirt chain and parent it to the pelvis. Again, same thing, keep the offset. And that's it for the rigging. Now we have a model with a bunch of different stuff rigged. But how are you going to make use of this? Well, if you're saying within the bounds of Blender, you can use the Wiggle 2 add-on. Link will be in the description. Once enabled, you can access it from this animation tab. There will be a Wiggle 2 drop-down, and you'll just head over into Pose Mode. And for every top bone of your Wiggle Chains, check Bone Head. So of course the hair, the top bones of the skirt, chains, and the top bones of the chain chain. Then for every other bone of the chain, you check off bone tail instead. And from there, those chains will have physics once you keyframe it and you um, play it in the playback. I'm not going to be going over the fine tuning. This is just here for the basic steps. Those things you can probably figure out on your own. Usually if you're working within the bounds of Blender, you're going to have some sort of auto IK going on. And I know we didn't set up one of those fancy auto rigs here, but a reminder that there is some native auto IK that we can make use of for this basic rig. Granted, it might not be as flexible, but it will still get the job done for most things. If you're wondering what to do for the blinking and mouse stuff, you can check the video just before this one, which utilizes shape keys, but is fully compatible with your rig over here. Now I'll also show you how to export it as a VRM in Unity. And for that, you have to ensure that you just have your rig and your mesh. Just a reminder that you can delete all of your occluded body mesh parts too, since the clothing is already fully rigged on top of it. So here I'm done with everything in Blender. I'm just going to go File, Export, FBX. Assuming you already did your due diligence by making sure all of the transforms are applied, and all the modifiers are applied, everything's joined into one rig and one mesh, then you don't need to do any of these settings. You just have to export the FBX. And I'm just gonna copy paste the VRM install from the other video. You can Google Uni VRM, click their GitHub link, scroll down under Unity package under installation, click latest release, scroll down to under 0.x and download that Uni VRM Unity package. You can then drag and drop this into Unity into any 3D scene. Go ahead and press import. And just like that, the VRM0 dropdown will be available now in your dropdowns. All right, so here we just drag in the FBX file that we exported from Blender. I'm going to rotate it so that it's aligned with the blue arrow, which is at the bottom of its feet because you need it facing the positive Z axis when you export it as a VRM. 
Now I've clicked on that VRM file under my assets, go to rig, change animation type to humanoid, hit apply, then hit configure. Here you're just checking if all the bones are in the right spots. I'll just change the eye bones and the jaw to none because I only have a neck and head bone. Apart from that, it usually gets all the other bones correct, so I'm not even gonna bother checking. The video before this has a texturing example, but for the sake of quickness, I'm just gonna export this. It didn't let me because I have to select the object in the scene hierarchy, which is right here. Then I can go to VRM0, export. You need to fill in these fields for some reason. You can just type whatever, export, save it to the desktop, and drag that new file you just exported back into Unity. I'll go ahead and hide the original one in the inspector because we don't need it anymore. Then I drag the new one, the VRM we just exported into the scene. As you can see, it has all these scripts attached to it now. I'm just gonna open up all the bone dropdowns in the scene hierarchy. That way I can easily drag and drop these bones in later. I'll click on secondary now, which has a VRM spring bone script. So let's add in some root bone elements, drag and drop them in. These are gonna be the root bones of the breast. Actually, they're only one bone, but for the other chained ones, we only have to drag in the root bones. Now we can go to play and go to the topmost root object. And once we do that, if we drag these, we can see that the physics are working. Obviously you'll have to tweak them, but they are working. You can add in more VRM spring bone scripts just by adding component to secondary. And usually you just put in all the things that have similar physics into one group. So here I'm just gonna do one for pretty much all the accessories, including the skirt. And I'll just drag in all the root bones of the skirt. Once all that's done, you should probably add a collider. So I'll go over to the spine bone and add a collider group since it is the closest bone to the skirt. And I think I just end up putting in four different colliders so that it could go around the waist and a bit of the thighs. Let's try to get them fitting into the legs as best as we can so the skirt doesn't clip through the legs. Let's add one to the head bone as well, uh, so that the bangs don't go through the head. And for the most part, that's working fine. As you might notice, those parts that we partially weight painted, they are not going fully with the bone. Like you can see the yellow bone lines moving, but the meshes are not fully following them. So that should give you an idea of when to use partial weighting and when to use full weighting for your, um, for your bones. One solution for skirts in terms of like upskirting and uh, clipping, you don't have to make the top skirt bones the root. You can go down to even like the third or fourth link of the thing and make those the root instead. So that's what I did here. I made it, I think the third root of the skirt bones. And now um, it's more connected around the buttocks area while the bottom of the skirt still can move around. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, like and support the video and the channel if it helped. Obviously there are some sloppy things in this video and this model, but I'm just trying to get information out quickly and try to condense things into a short enough video. I'll see you in the next one, peace.